when that oil seeps into the alternator, obviously that's not a good thing. Hey, I'm Glenn. Welcome to the All Stars Cars Channel. Today's fun project, well, we got a leaker. So I've got a Hyundai here with the 3.8 liter V6. And what's going on is it's a very common problem. The valve cover gasket leaks oil. It runs down the cylinder head and onto the alternator. It saturates the alternator, dirt and grime and everything else collects in there. And eventually your alternator burns out. So uh, this car has an oil leak. I want to take you down there today. I'm going to show you how to replace that gasket, prevent the alternator damage and uh, save some time and money. So let's check it out. So a common issue on these Hyundai 3.8 or Kia also, same thing, is on the V6, the front valve cover gasket will leak oil it seeps out this is the front here and down on this corner right in here is where oil tends to seep out and it seeps right down onto the alternator you can see the windings in there the copper windings and you can see how wet this one is so before this thing goes bad I want to change out that gasket the valve cover gasket to prevent that from happening it's a very common issue the valve cover in the rear tends to leak also, but that kind of drips down onto the exhaust. And when you turn on your fan inside the cab and your climate control, your HVAC, you can uh, oftentimes smell those fumes burning off and it stinks pretty bad. But to do that, you need to remove your intake manifold to get to that back uh, valve cover. That's a different job for a different day. Anyway, let's get on this front one and I'll show you how it's done. All right, it never fails once I start hitting the record button. Somebody has to start mowing grass. But anyway, it is what it is. So on these uh, fancy covers here, you have 10 millimeter nuts, six of them. Well, actually, you have four nuts, two four acorn nuts, and then two bolts right here. Zip this out. This one's missing one of the nuts, but no biggie. So you got to take that off that way. Get this out. And then this thing will pop right off. And now we have access to that valve cover. To get started, I want to remove this uh, hose upper coolant hose bracket. So these are all 10 millimeter. Just take that out. This moves back. There's one bolt right here that's holding in this whole entire bracket. Take that bolt out. And then this bracket comes out like so. Comes out like that. There we go. So there's just that one bolt here. And what I like to do is, so it doesn't get confusing, I will put these bolts back in place on the valve cover. So when we go to reinstall, we know exactly what goes where and we don't have too many extra parts. So you're going to want to get this front, uh, I don't know what you call it, air intake tube or whatever this thing is up here. You want it, that goes to your air box. You want to get this out of your way. So this just comes out, there's like one, two, three, four, five, and about six of these little pins, these clips, you just take a Phillips, unscrew that little screw, helps to have one of these cap paws, one of these, I'll link it down below, and then all you do is yank these right out, if you're not familiar with it. So let's get this out of the way, just to make life easier. That just lifts up and out. That's it. It just kind of pushes down into this tube down there. I don't know if you guys can see it. Anyway, that's out of the way. Now you have lots of room up front here to see what you're doing. So it's possible to bungee this cord back, or this cord, this hose, and not have to disconnect it. Before you remove your valve cover, I suggest you uh, air it all together. If you have an air compressor, if not, I'm not sure, maybe a vacuum, a shop vac might help. But you want to get all the loose debris off. We don't want any grit going down into the engine. Once the valve cover comes off, we'll have the, you know, everything will be exposed internally. So give the engine a good blow. Get all the nooks and crannies. So with that piece out, there's where it goes right in front that air dam it's easy to get in here air duct anyway i got to bring you down here to show you these other two bolts hopefully i can get them on film it's going to be a little tight but one what you got to do is let me show you behind this coolant 
upper coolant hose is a uh, wire harness right across here and that's uh, zip tied to a bracket so you need to get this bracket out there's one bolt here 10 millimeter and then the other guy is maybe you can see it right right there okay so take those two little shorties out and that will release this harness so this can be pushed back towards the front of the car all right for those two little bolts i get my uh electric ratchet on here try not to lose these things when they fall out or when they come out here's one right there and now if you don't have an electric ratchet obviously you can do this by hand i just use this for speed just a little quicker and this one is out oh don't drop it oh come on got it right here they'll be even more fun putting them back in taking them out's the easy part okay so now this is out of my way what you can't see right now is i'm taking a bolt out of the there's an oil dipstick tube here you can see that yellow dipstick well there's a bracket that bolts and there goes the goddamn socket. All right, well, I'll retrieve that in a minute. So, taking this bolt out, and I can show you guys where this is here. Self explanatory. It's a bigger bolt, it's a 12, most of the other stuff's 10. And what I'm going to do is just push this back and see if I can't get this harness out of the way. There'd be no way for me to film this for you. So this bolt came out of this area right down here. There's a bracket for this dipstick tube. You'll see it. It's, it's kind of hidden, right? Uh, it's right back here where my finger is. So take that out. And what that allows you to do is push this back a little bit. So now you can see there are the bolts for the valve cover right down in there. Of course, it's kind of, oh, hold on. Sorry about the shakiness. All right, let's get this. Let's get professional level YouTube here. All right, let me zoom in. Can you see that? Hopefully you can see all that, that grunge down in here, all that oil and stuff. That's where that thing's been leaking. So now we can get to the bolts. Those are the valve cover bolts right back down there. That one, that one, and so forth. One back here in the corner. Can't forget him right, th oop, right there. And then we'll work our way up, okay? So now you guys can see what I'm doing. All right, so there's an engine hook right here. If you got to yank your engine, they, they got this bracket built in. It's kind of bending up over towards this way. So I'm just going to loosen it and uh, get it out of our way so we don't have to deal with it. So I got a 14 millimeter wrench. Give this a little tap. There we go. It's a ratchet wrench. Okay. So I'm going to loosen that, get that out of our way. We don't have to deal with that, whether it has to come out or not. I'm not sure, but... Let's try to make it easy on ourselves. Okay. So I want to get these coils out of the way now, or the, the coil uh, harness. There's a little tab here. You just pull that, push that back, and then you squeeze this sucker here. They're a little stiff, but Right up here is your little tab, and then that just comes back. You push down on this and pull those out. So let's get that released. That way we can get this uh, harness flopped over and out of our way. Oh, these are tight. I've had these out before, and they're still tight. So if they've never been removed, Get ready for the struggle. Got a set of these pliers here. See how they're kind of bent over. I'll link that down below. They, they kind of give you a better grip sometimes. But you got to squeeze these things. They can be pretty tight. There we go. There it is. Okay. And then we take this. This one's already loose. I loosened it off camera. This 10 millimeter bolt right here. And that's for this harness. We're trying to get this up and out of our way. 
take them out. They're all 10 millimeter. There we go. That should loosen that up a little bit. You can see that's moving now. I want to get enough room to kind of squeeze the cover out, sneak it by, so to speak. All right, I want to show you some more details over here. So here's the three bolts for this part of the harness. Then down here, you've got this harness runs along here, and then there's another bracket, plastic bracket here. So I took this 10 millimeter bolt out here, and then there's one I can't even film it. It's back there. You'll see it. It's catty corner to this, about three inches back. So you get that out, and now you can see we have some looseness here so that we can kind of stretch this and get it out of our way. Here's the bracket here, the engine bracket. I got it loose. There's the 14 millimeter bolt down there. So that's that. Got our coils here is what I was going to show you before. Here's that little plastic tab. This black one, slide that back, then squeeze down on this gray one, and then you can pop it off. And then after you put it on, click and then push the plastic pin in to lock it, okay? So that's that. It's hot as molasses out here. So what I'm doing now is releasing the fuel injectors, harnesses here, and what you do is you slide this white piece up. There's a little white piece, and then there's a little black tab. Squeeze that down and then pull up. Uh, once again, if you have a pair of these fancy pliers, but I didn't show them yet, these make life a little bit easier. What I like to do is just get a pick and pull that tab up like that and then I just get these on here and it usually works pretty good let me get two hands going of course you can't see anything I'm doing but trust me I'm doing it all right last one here I can get these down in there it's very very tight but it's doable there we go that works Okay, so now this is getting more loose, so to speak. And I'll try to bungee that up and out of the way. Let me see if I can disconnect some stuff here and get it further out of the way. So what I'm doing now is making room here by releasing this harness. So this connector is right here. Just pull this white tab back, got that out of the way. Then I disconnected this connector right here, which to do that, there's a white tab right here. Just take your uh, little pocket screwdriver, just like on the fuel injectors, pop this white pin or white clip back and then push down on this gray tab and it'll separate. Very easy. And then on the back, there's a harness here that's onto this metal bracket. I want to get that out of the way. So from behind, what I'm going to do is squeeze this pin, this clip that goes through, and just pull these through. There we go. Of course, you probably can't see the thing I'm doing, but when you see it, you'll know it. Come on. It's fighting me. All right. And a biscuit. Come on, biscuit eater. Oh, boy. There it is. Okay. We got it. Lost our light, but... There we go. Okay, so now this piece is separated. So let me push this out of the way. We'll push this up and under over there. So now this is all open. I think I'm gonna get, get this bracket out of my way. It's, I can see it's gonna be a problem. It's a little tricky to reach in here, but once you get the harness loose, now you could go down deeper down this way towards the alternator, start disconnecting all that if you really wanna get this whole thing out of the way. But I'm not going that far. I'm crazy, but I'm not that crazy. So I got other stuff to do today. All right, let me get this bolt out. You may have to reach back in here. The smaller your fingers and hands are, the easier this will be. I'm doing the old two finger cul-de-sac technique on it. I decided to move this bracket out of my way. There we go. Disconnect this connector. And now I can lift. Oh boy, there goes my wrench. Man, one of those days, come on, dude. All right, 
Now I can get in here a little easier with that harness out of my way and get this bolt out. All right, this is going in this way. This is called missionary. All right, man, this bolt is long. Well, I guess it's better than the engine falling to the ground when you're on the hoist. There it is. Wow. Okay. There it is here. There's the bolt. Goes back through there. I think I showed you that earlier. Okay. Next step. Get this hose out of our way. Alright, this hose was a bear. Let me get the light on it. This hose here, you gotta release the clamps. There's two clamps and then slide it back. And then once you get it off the front here, off the valve cover, we'll pull it forward. It is not fun. I spared you guys the time of watching that. Now that that's all off, I'll pull it this way towards me. It should come off, see? Here it is with the two clamps. It's a, it's a fun one. To make it easier, there's two bolts back here. Oh, you guys can see. On the fuel rail back here, we could probably loosen that up and get that to slide back. Once this harness is loose, let me see. Let's do that. I didn't see it before. Let me, uh, they're 10 millimeter. Let me just loosen them up and then I can tell you so that your life could be easier than mine was just a few minutes ago. I'm just gonna loosen them. Loosen, not tighten it in. Oh yeah, do that. I didn't even take them out. They're just loose in there. This pipe moves way back now, so it'll give you plenty more room. Excellent, do that. Let me show you what we got cooking here. So, we didn't have to drain the coolant. What I did was took a bungee right to the factory bracket right here and pulled it back. See the bungees on here? Straight back to right here, just hooked it on there. That's a little 10 inch bungee, nine inch. And then for the uh, harness here for the fuel injection, what I did was just bungee from here back to the cowl, hook right in there. Now this is up, it might be hard to see on camera, but you can see here, I got plenty of room to get this loose and bring it up. Next thing I wanna do now is I'm gonna take these coils out, 10 millimeter, undo the bolt, yank them right out, no problem. This here, let me get this out of the way. This is all pretty much free now. We'll can, we can loosen the bungee to get a little more slack here. All right, you guys having fun on the Oz Stars Cars channel? I sure am. It's about 90 something degrees today with about 99% humidity. And every time I fire up the camera, I shut the fan off for you guys so you won't you won't have to hear the noise and I get to sweat, but I can use it. So three bolts are out, twist and pull. There's your coil packs. Oops, there's your coil packs right there. One little bolt in the end. Simple to do. So that's out of the way. All right, we put those up there. We'll put our bolts back. You'll have to put them all the way in, just a few threads. Oops, don't cross thread. Don't you cross thread me. That would be not fun. All right, there we go. Now, we're all set to start taking off our valve cover. We just have to relieve, what do we, we got? One, two, three, let's see, two, four, six, eight, nine, we got about 12 bolts so to get this valve cover off now we have about 12 10 millimeter bolts to take out 12 14 16 make that 18 because we got these in the center here you can leave the spark plugs in okay so I'll start zipping these out what I'll do is start from the center and work my way out and then when we go to put them back in we will torque from the center out and I'm gonna look up those torque specs
Here's something I'm gonna do real quick. I'm gonna spray the outside of the valve cover off before I actually fully release it. That way if there's any loose contamination that the air gun didn't get off or the air compressed, uh, compressed air, uh, we can get it off now. So. All right, here we go. Oh, by the way, there's a cam sensor back. Ooh, can you see me? Back here, back here. In this back corner, just unplug that. That's this one here. Pops right off. All right, so I'm gonna hold on to the uh, oil fill cap here. Actually, let me, how should we do this? Let's give it a little tap, a little tap a -roo. We may have to get the old screwdriver action. Oh, wait a minute. I forgot a bolt. Oh boy, amateur hour. Did I say 18 bolts? Meant 19. There you go. <laughs> yeah. It would help if you take them all out. All right. Maybe there's 19 in there. I don't know. Maybe there's 20. I better count again. I don't see any more. All right. <laughs> well, we gotta we go all out on the Ostars Cars channel. Not gonna lie. All right. Let's tap that. Just giving it a little tap, nothing crazy. See if we can put some vibration in, I'm pulling up. Oh boy. What I think I'll do is I'll get a small screwdriver and tap that right there. All right, I'm gonna take my screwdriver in up here. Just between the cylinder head and the valve cover and just give it a little tap. Hopefully she'll break free. There it is, it's getting loose now, okay. Give it a little tap here, you can kind of hear the sound difference. Now let me try wiggling and pulling up. Uh, in case you were wondering, this car has about 123,000 miles on it. It's an 07. Oh, there we go. That's the sound we want to hear. Okay, so now we're going to sneak this up and out. Oh boy, come on. The front's a little stiff here. There it goes. All right, let me zoom out a little bit so you guys don't miss any fun stuff. I'll get the front out and then we'll get the back part out. There it goes. That's why it's so important to clean so you don't drop anything inside that engine. It looks pretty clear. It looks pretty clean. This is nice. It's been well maintained. All right, so what do we got? Here's our two camshafts. Here's our timing chain right across here. Our original gasket stuck to the cylinder head, so let's get that out of here. Pull this out of the way. It's I can feel it's kind of brittle, and that's usually why they leak. They kind of dry out. They can even crack if they get dry enough. And now down here, this valve cover gasket is attached to these tube uh, gaskets right here in the middle. Let me get them off. They're down in there pretty good. Mm. All right, and that's these right here. So these go around, that seals the oil out of your spark plug tube so oil doesn't get, if you have oil down in here when you do a tune up, most chances are most likely you need to replace this gasket. Let's zoom out get the whole thing in so you guys can't feel it obviously but it's very stiff and brittle I'm gonna go with a Felpro I'll give you guys a part number what I'll do next is I'm just gonna clean this up along the cylinder head here very gingerly pushing dirt away and out and then I'll show you where you need to put some uh, sealant on the cylinder head here where the uh, timing chain cover bolts to the cylinder head it's very important to put new sealant there or you will get a leak all right, on to the next step. All right, let me give you a look-see. So you can see where it leaves this line of dirt along here, but this is what I wanted to show you. Hopefully you can see it here from this angle. So right here is where we're gonna put a dab. We're gonna clean this. 
and put a dab of gray uh, RTV there and then this one right here so you can kind of see that line it's this is in front of the camshaft here okay right here front of the timing chain you see that line that sealant well right here is where we, we need to seal it so we'll clean that good and uh, get our new gasket in. Let me take you over to the bench. Okay, so what I like to do is you can see where this sucker's been leaking. Let me flip her over. So we're gonna clean this up real good. I don't have a parts washer, so I have to do it by hand. But you can see where the oil's been leaking out, and that's that corner above the alternator. And you can see where this stuff is like real nasty. It's at the bottom. And that's dripping, causing our problem. So let's get this cleaned up. So your Felpro valve cover gasket set comes with two gaskets. Obviously, it's a V6. Uh, this one here that we're working on, on the front part of the car, that's the left side of the engine. Then the right side is the valve cover and the, what we call the back towards the firewall. Well, these have part numbers on them. They are different. They're very similar, but a little bit different. And if you look between where the spark plug tube gasket meets the main gasket here, it might be hard to see on camera. It's upside down, actually. But the last three for the front left side of the engine would be 751, and the back is 750, the last three. So let's spin it around. I'll get you the whole part number right there. Right there. That's the one there that we need. See how it ends in 750. Anyway, all you need to do, these are real simple. They go in dry. You just kind of press them into place. They're pre-molded. I usually have pretty good luck with Felpro gaskets. Um, I like their quality and for the most part they fit very well like the OEM. So anyway, just lay this in here. Now if you have a problem where the gasket will not stay in place before you set it down you know, onto the cylinder head, you could take a little bit of contact cement, just like a dot, like a, a dab, and put a little here, maybe a little there, just a couple little spots underneath the gasket and just press it into it and that should hold it temporarily uh, until you can fit it but most of the time these fit snug enough that you don't need to worry about that once they're all in okay so this one's in and what i'm going to do is give you the torque specs once i get this onto the engine i still have to go clean the cylinder head up once i start getting this bolt down i'll or bolt it in i'll give you guys the uh, bolt sequence also give you a diagram which will help you a lot to do it right. All right, so I've got a flat razor blade here, and what I want to carefully do is put my finger here and not cut it, of course, and then get these, get this RTV out of the way, so without dropping any of it into the engine. I'm just gonna cut it kind of flush, so without cutting my finger, hopefully. Of course, my finger's probably right in your way, but sorry, not much I can do. But anyway, you get the idea. This is how we do it. Very carefully, there we go. Get that crap out of here. Basically, I just want this flush. All right, I'm going to continue cleaning this up and do the other part down here, this one. Like I think I showed you earlier. That one back in here. Oops, can you see what I'm pointing? Right there. Get that cleaned up. Get everything clean. We can see how messy and nasty it is down here. See all this grease or uh, oil and dirt. Oop, can't see anything when I'm not on it. But you can see how nasty this is really dirty nice and clean this is like real dirty down here from the oil leaking but i've got the uh gray rtv action going here and i'm going to put a little dab oops I'm trying to hold this steady for us and put just a little bead across here we want it to stick real good so i'm just going to tap that just a little bead. Remember, this is going to squeeze out. So then we got some down here. 
we don't want too much because we don't want to squeeze into the engine and we also want to wait a good half hour before we start the engine an hour overnight is best but that's enough that's all you need right there that's almost too much it looks big on camera but here's my finger so you can see a couple millimeters that's it All right, I don't know what got caught on film and what didn't. My camera shut off. That was weird. Okay. So much for that. Now I just want to make sure that that gasket stayed in before I bolt anything in. And you can kind of see it around there. There we go. That's it. Looks good. Last thing you want to do is put this all together and then, you know, find out you got a big leaker. Okay, excellent. Now, I'm going to set all 19 bolts in here and then I'll show you the torque specs and the tightening sequence. All right, not sure what was going on with my camera, but it cut off and uh, fortunately I caught it seeing that it was I don't know I've this Sony for a while, but it's been good to me. Anyway, something else to fix. Uh, I've got the uh, valve cover tightening sequence for you that I told you about so I'm gonna to try to get this all on camera in one shot this is the back valve cover which we're the right side which is towards the firewall this is the one we're working on right here and you can see the sequence sorry if it's a little blurry that's how it printed out but you start here with one two then you go out to three four five six and you go all the way around till you get to number 19 that's the one that I almost forgot to take out. And anyway, that's how you sequence that. Now, our torque setting is right up here. I put that, where is it for you guys? Right here, hopefully you can see it. It's seven to eight pound feet, which is 84 inch pounds. My torque wrench does not go that low on pound feet, but it does have the uh, inch pounds. So I set it to 84. And your Newton meter is 10 to 11. So if you're using that format, so I don't know if it's coming up or not. But anyway, what I do is I take my uh, my ratchet. I get all the bolts started by hand, which I did already. Then I'll just take my ratchet in this sequence, and I just, you know, seven to eight's not much. I'll just go around in that sequence, tighten everything down by hand, just, you know, just to get it where it's grabbing. Then I will put my torque wrench on there and do the old clicky-click. So we go all the way around. I'm not going to bore you guys with 19 bolts to torque down. That's too much. And uh, what I'll do now is, or next after that, I'll put everything back together, put our harness back and all that good stuff, put our coils in, and I'll fire it up. So I'll turn the camera back on. Hopefully it's going to work, this camera. And we'll, uh, we'll see if it starts, and hopefully we won't have any of those drippy oil leaks down there. Okay, only took me a few more minutes, got it all back together. I'm going to go in the car, cold start, fire it up. First thing I'll do is uh, check for leaks, right? Should start with no problem. All my sensors are hooked back up, and we're good to go there. So let me get on the car. Check engine light on so far, so that's good. Runs pretty smooth for 120,000 on it. 125. What I'm going to do now is down here by the alternator, I'm going to uh, spray that down a little bit, not get too crazy. I don't want too much crap in the alternator, and get that clean, and that way I can monitor the car, make sure there is no uh, future oil leak here, at least for a long time. Everything looks good here. I'm going to shut it down.
Okay, so that's not too bad of a job and will prevent your alternator from prematurely burning out. Now keep in mind the valve cover in the back on the right side of the engine is probably also leaking. So the way to check that is get under the car, look up, look at that exhaust manifold across there. And if you see discoloration, that's the oil dripping on it. It's burning off, it stinks, and it probably should be replaced also. Now what you gotta do there is take your intake manifold off, Hyundai Kia, they call it a surge tank. You've got to remove that to get that valve cover. It's a bit, little bit of a pain, not too bad. And if you haven't changed your spark plugs out yet, that's a good time to do it because you can access them th at that time. So anyway, uh, smash the like button if you thought this video was helpful or you enjoyed it or whatever. Uh, subscribe, like, comment, share, you know, all that fun stuff here on YouTube helps my channel. I appreciate you taking the time to watch the video and I'll see you on the next one. Don't forget to check me out on OzStars Cars on Instagram. Yep. And then Facebook's OzStar and whatever else. So anyway, thanks a lot. Take it easy.